sorry also if I said I'm not going to be an expert on managing, uh, on managing immigration. I, I think this whole business of uh, con trying to control migration is completely misplaced and the only way you can control migration is by controlling people's hearts and minds and this is as we know as possible. But we do have to manage uh, the world as we, as we find it and I would like to say one or two things about that. But first I want to use some of my precious time just to say what a huge pleasure and honour it is to be on with this, with this panel. Um, and I, I know from my own time in the Parliament, I was an MP between 1997 and 2005, that there are individuals who are able to shape legislation and change things without grandstanding and posturing, that who gain respect because they have an absolute commitment to the things that they believe in. And I recognise in the work of David that that's exactly what's happening here. And so I think the opportunity to um, engage with the David uh, and uh, have this conversation together and it's very valuable because uh, David is somebody who uh, can keep chipping away at things and can make a difference and that's, that's extremely valuable and important and I think we should be we should be very appreciative of that. And it's also an opportunity to say thank you to Nasek and to Francis who yes have uh, seen the potential of the organisation that I lead called New Europeans, neuropeans.net uh, and uh, is the web uh, address, and have given us a tremendous amount of uh, encouragement. And I was very interested in what, uh, what NASAC uh, had to say, because we started out as an organisation trying to give mobile EU citizens a voice and a platform. And we learnt an awful lot from the way in which Michael Voice had worked. But of course, um, what EU mobile citizens didn't know at the time but they do know now, is that they are in fact themselves migrants because this is uh, the way in which the debate has developed over the last few years. So very good to be able to stand here side by side with you, as I think to say proudly that we are all migrants now. Um, I think that we um, have to recognise that we live at a time of uh, momentous change again. Uh, and uh, a time, as Francis said, of great movements of people. Now, I, I was going to start with this, but I don't, I'm getting down a very serious route and it's a serious meeting, and, and I, you know, it's not that I suddenly want to sort of go off the subject, but we put a post on our Facebook post today about David Bowie, and I hope that, um, you know, my condolences to those who, who, who David Bowie fans. And the reason I want to mention this is because you remember that it, David Bowie made an important album in Berlin, and he spent some time in Berlin. And I lived in Berlin in the 1980s. And I, I was there when the Berlin Wall came down. And I am uh, very sorry to say that the Berlin Wall seems to be going up again. Not only in Hungary, but this week we learned that after 50 years, Denmark and Sweden have uh, put border controls in, have not had them for 50 years. And so it's impossible to separate the issue of free movement of mobile EU citizens from the question of mobility of non-EU citizens and of migrants and refugees, by which I, when I say migrant, I mean somebody who wants to settle here, wants to come and build a new life here, and refugees, somebody who may wish to start a new life here, but is driven here through persecution and through suffering, and may want to stay, wish to stay or may, may wish to go, go home. And of course we know that some of these uh, uh, people who are on the move are not very mobile at all. In fact, some of them are locked up in detention centres, even if they're <coughs> children. But this is just one extreme spectrum of issues to do with mobility, that, uh, where we don't see really enough of, of human rights. And um, Jean-Claude Juncker, in his State of the Union address, said, what we need is more Europe and more Europe, more Europe in this union and more union in this union. And what I say to that on behalf of Europeans is, well, that's fine. You have more Europe if you want to. You have more union if you want to. But what we want, or maybe not, what concerns us is there's not enough freedom in this Europe, there's not enough equality in this Europe, and there's not enough solidarity in this Europe, whatever form that union may take. And of course, in 1989, the process by which the Berlin Wall came down is something that we can learn from today. And I was there and I saw it happening. And it came from civil society.
came from civil society, particularly in East Germany, but also solidarity and other movements. It came from those who were concerned about human rights and were able to mobilise because of the values, the shared values that they had. And also just because there was an inevitability about it, which nobody saw at the time, but it was obvious afterwards. And I also spent a lot of time in Munich, and I can remember people starting to come through from Hungary, and then the thing getting more and more, and then everybody thinking what to do. And in the end, we know what happened. Germany, uh, the West and Germany East united on the basis of parity of the Deutsche Mark, which was an absolutely phenomenal change for them to take on the time. But, you know, what's that book, the bill, that expression that Angela Merkel uses? <laughs> we can do it, and they did. And, okay, so we're talking about 25,000 uh, Syrian refugees here. It would have been less if it wasn't for David's involvement. So, thank you. Um, Poland is taking 7,000 refugees. And the scaremongering that went on before the elections last year in Poland, because we were, we, New Europeans have a project with the partner of the Ministry of Public Affairs, and also we were there a few days before the election. And there was hysteria about an invasion. Remember the invasion of Bulgaria from Major? There was hysteria in Poland about, about 7,000 was the number. And you've got a government elected on the back. So this is, this is the situation. There's great movements of people. It happened in 1989, it happened after the war, and it's happening again now. And we can manage it, but we need to uh, remember who we are. And I, I pay tribute to the many, many people. You know, today, we talked, I talked about David Bowie in, in Berlin, and I think it was in the 1970s, I remember in the 1980s, who I didn't bump into him when I was there. But last week, we had Ai Weiwei in Lesbos. And a great friend of mine <coughs> in Srinka Brale, who runs the migrant uh, communities and, and refugees for was spent her Christmas in the New Year on that spot, welcoming refugees and working with NGOs to welcome those deans and those who were arriving. And so when Ai Weiwei came up and took selfie with her, we, we tried to spread that around because it put some light on this. Because what's going on on the beaches of Lesbos with these NGOs today is not too different to what was happening with some people who were in Berlin when I was there. They want to breathe the air of freedom. They want to understand that we are human, that we have a humanity, a shared humanity. And that human rights are an expression of that humanity. And this is an opportunity. This is our generation's opportunity to celebrate our humanity by really doing the right thing when it comes to the question of refugees and migrants. And you saw that reaction. I can perhaps just finish with this. You saw that reaction in Paris. What was the reaction in Paris after those dreadful, dreadful attacks in the Vatican? <coughs> what did people do? They opened their doors. They let people in. And we have to understand that we cannot control migration. We cannot control... This, is, this isn't something that's just happened to Europe. This is a world event that people are on the move. And there are countries like Lebanon and Jordan and others that proportionately are taking far, far more than we can. Germany has taken one million migrants and refugees. So it, it can be done. But we have to want to do it. There has to be a kind of understanding that... This is who we are as Europeans. This is what we stand for. This is the side of the line that we are on. We are on the side of freedom, on this side of the Berlin Wall, and not on the other side of the Berlin Wall. And we do not want the Berlin Wall back again. And so I think that, you know, it's that that's going to bring us together. It's that that's going to bring those values. But things are, uh, things are rapidly going the other way. And I think unless we can really mobilise support, and it does make a difference. And David mentioned the, 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 the wave of compassion after the death of Ireland Kirby. And civil society organisations went to work. And they offered, they approached local authorities and regional authorities in France and in this country. They approached football clubs. They got football supporters to unfold banners. <coughs> and the thing got organised. And this is what we have to do. So I hope that tonight is an opportunity to hear about that. There also needs to be a European dimension to this. There needs to be th actions taken at the European level to facilitate uh, this uh, upsurge in, in support from, 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 from civil society. We as individuals need to decide where we stand and this civil society is mobilising we need to get behind and support that. But politicians need to facilitate it. And a big part of the story is what needs to happen at the European level and I know that that's what Stuart's going to speak about next.